Welcome to the Climate and Water Outlook for October to December 2018. It's a dry outlook for parts of the country and warmer than average days are very likely for most of Australia. But first, let's look at recent conditions. Rainfall has been very low this month. September 2018 will go down as one of Australia's driest months on record. This comes on the back of dry conditions since the start of the year, particularly inland. Alice Springs didn't have a drop of rain for 161 days, its longest dry spell on record. Meanwhile, daytime temperatures have been close to average this month for much of the country, though it has been warmer than average over parts of eastern Australia and most of the tropical north. However, clearer skies have led to cooler than average nights, especially in the south of the mainland. Newdigate in southwest Western Australia had its lowest temperature on record, minus 4.3 degrees on the 15th of September. Unfortunately, this has meant frosts have damaged crops in Western Australia's southern wheat belt and Victoria's Wimmera. The high daytime temperatures and long period of low rainfall have dried soils, resulting in well below average soil moisture for much of Australia. By now, we'd expect to see levels in southern water storages increasing after winter rain. However, we still haven't seen an overall increase in the past month in the northern Murray-Darling Basin or eastern New South Wales. Compared to this time last year, storages across the whole Murray-Darling Basin, eastern New South Wales and southern Victoria are much lower. But storages in Tasmania and southwest Western Australia are higher than they were 12 months ago. So what's influencing our climate in the coming months? Last month, all eight international models we survey forecast El Nino in November. This month, only three of the eight models are forecasting El Nino, and not until December. That would be a very late start, but not unprecedented. In the Indian Ocean, current sea surface temperatures and model forecasts show there is still a chance of a positive Indian Ocean dipole developing for spring. That would typically reduce spring rainfall in central and southern Australia. Even if El Nino or the positive IOD don't fully form, they're still influencing our three-month rainfall outlook. October to December is likely to be drier than average in parts of the southeast, northeast and southwest. The one month outlook for October shows stronger chances of below average rainfall for the eastern half of Australia and the far southwest. Turning to the stream flow outlook for September to November, with below average rainfall likely and soils remaining dry, low stream flows are expected at around two thirds of forecast locations across eastern Australia. In contrast, Near median and high flows are more likely in southwest Western Australia and the Northern Territory. Looking at temperatures for October to December, there's a high chance of warmer than average days and nights over most of Australia. Southern Australia's bushfire season has already started in some areas, and there have been several fires in New South Wales and Victoria. The Southern Australia seasonal bushfire outlook shows above normal fire potential for forested areas of the East Coast, as well as parts of South Australia and Western Australia. In grassland areas, poor vegetation growth in winter means the fire potential remains near average. More details are available on the Bushfire and Natural Hazards CRC website. So in summary, rainfall is likely to be below average in some areas. Temperatures are likely to be warmer than average and low stream flows are forecast for Eastern Australia. For more details, visit our website at bomb.gov.au forward slash climate forward slash ahead. You can also get updates via Facebook and Twitter. Our first look at the likely conditions for November to January will be available on Thursday the 11th of October. For the Bureau of Meteorology, I'm Paul Fakemar.